week on One Devotion. Follow a EuroLeague star on his goodwill mission to Africa. Meet a young talent making strides at the height of the competition. See how the final four qualifiers got the job done on the road to Madrid. And check out the most amazing plays from the second week of the playoffs. It is hard to imagine a better example of a pro athlete giving back to his community than Bostian Nakbar. The FC Barcelona veteran dedicates weeks each off-season to the foundation he started to help disabled people in his native Slovenia. And if that were not enough, last summer Nakbar jumped to the chance to take his goodwill global when the children's charity UNICEF invited him on a special journey to the African country of Chad. UNICEF Slovenia was, uh, was planning a mission to go to Chad and to, uh, to gather as much as possible um, you know, video material um, to show the world the, the actual situation there. Um, they, they were looking for uh, an ambassador um, of, of this, kind, this kind of mission. Uh, they decided to go with an athlete and, and they, they called me up and I, I gladly responded. Um, so I was very uh, fortunate to have this opportunity to go to, to Africa myself, to see the situation there, to live there for a week and to experience it myself. Um, I think it was something that you don't easily easily forget, uh, but more importantly, it's something that I'll uh, gladly share with, with other people. The sad situation that Nakhbar and his fellow charity workers discovered as they traveled to one of the more remote regions of Chad left a big impression on him. We spent about a week you know, far away from the capital of, uh, of Chad. Uh, it was about a six hour drive through the desert to get to the, the small city of Mao, where we, we met a lot of families whose kids are mal malnourished, uh, families who, uh, who have huge problems because of lack of water. And um, also we met a lot of orphans whose parents died at an early age because of problems connected to these things. It's an area uh, which people don't know much about. I, I didn't know about such problems in Chad before I went there. Um, so I think that's why it had even more importance um, to go there and to show the world the problems. There are tens of thousands of kids who are dying because of malnutrition, because of lack of water. The footage gathered by Nakba and his UNICEF partners is now being broadcast on various media platforms with the intention of raising awareness about the level of humanitarian need in that and other parts of the world. I think the, the civilization is so advanced now that we shouldn't be talking about these problems anymore. And, and hopefully with missions such as we had and you know, many others, uh, we're going to be able to raise awareness to where the Western world and other people help countries like Chad. People who, who are not from Africa need to realize uh, the severity of, of the problem there, especially the kids who are um, in a very bad situation that desperately need our help. Um, the people there and I saw this from my own eyes, the people there are not able to help themselves. They need help from, from others, they need help from us. Another direct impact of witnessing the deprivation suffered by many people in Chad was to make Nakbar count his own blessings and appreciate them more. Once you, once you go there and you live, live you know, a week in, in, in such an environment, you appreciate the things that you have here, you appreciate it much more. And, and you realize how happy you are, how happy our kids are that they have the things that we have. And, uh, uh, you know, things that we have in everyday life, we shouldn't take them for granted. I think that was a, that was a huge lesson for myself and for the people around me. And I would like to share the story with, with as many people as possible. The problems in countries like Chad might seem far away and difficult to influence, but Nakbar also believes it is possible to make a positive contribution to society on a more local level. It's very important to, to, to help the people who are, who are in need. Uh, it might be just things that I'm saying now, but um, I, I saw it with my own eyes that people who receive help, even though if it's just a little, it can change lives, it can change uh, the way their lives, the future is. Um, so yeah, um, I'll always say, whenever you have a chance, even if it's your neighbor that is in need, you know, help them out, it goes a long way. As such, Nakpa's experiences in Chad and with his other charitable work have made him determined to continue to help. Well, funny thing was when I came back from Africa, I, I asked right away, uh, when are we going back? <laughs> uh, 
So, um, you know, hopefully in the future I'll have a chance to go back. I'd like to go back to the same place that I've been just to see, see the progress and see the change. Uh, but if other opportunities will arise, I'll, I'll also do that. Um, so, so we'll see. I don't have a set uh, destination, a set uh, uh, mission that I want to go to, but uh, whatever will be, uh, will be present, presented to me and, and the, the opportunities that, that I'll have, um, I'll definitely be on the plane to, to, help, to help more people. The second week of the playoffs dawned with three series leaders holding chances to clinch final four berths on the road in Game 3. But after four thrillers that could not have been closer, celebration was postponed for all but one of them. With a 2-0 series lead, Real Madrid visited Anadolu FS Istanbul and got an early lead thanks to Rudy Fernandez. But when Tomá Hurtel and Nenad Kerstic came off the bench, FS controlled the rest of the first half. Matt Janin dominated the third quarter with 13 points to put his team up by 10, but Sergio Rodriguez came alive in the fourth quarter to bring Madrid back. A dramatic finale saw JC Carroll tie the game with seven seconds remaining, but FS hit back to win it 75-72 with Janin's sensational buzzer-beating triple. Facing a 2-0 series deficit, reigning champions Maccabi Electra stormed ahead early behind Brian Randall's dunks in a must-win home game against Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul. But soon the visitors' defence took charge. After a highly competitive second half, Maccabi was close to victory until Jan Vesely's spectacular slam dunk forced overtime. In the extra period, Andrew Gabalot twice scored go-ahead baskets and the Fenerbahce defence made the second one stand for a 74-75 victory to sweep the series and claim the club's first ever ticket to the Final Four. A true clash of heavyweights in Athens, Panathinaikos and Seska Moscow took turns landing big shots and controlling the scoreboard. Seska moved ahead early, but the Greens fought back in the second quarter to tie at half-time. On fire, Nikos Papas and Antonis Foxes combined for nine three-pointers, as Panathinaikos landed a playoffs record 16 shots from downtown but Sonny Weems scored 20 points in the final seven minutes to give Seska a late tie. Papas had the final word at the free throw line, however, and the Greens won their first of the series, 86-85. Olympiacos Pireos battled hard with visiting FC Barcelona to establish a 10-point lead soon after the half, but the visitors found a go-to guy, Massie Lampe, who keyed a 0-10 run that gave Barca the lead going into the fourth quarter. Othello Hunter and Josh Pintesis restored the Reds' advantage before Juan Carlos Navarro brought Barcelona back again. Vasilis Spanoulis hit late free throws to give Olympiacos the lead again, and when Alex Abrines missed from downtown at the buzzer, the home team had a 73-71 victory and a 2-1 series lead. Nikos Papas delivered a spectacular performance for Panathinaikos Athens on Monday night, earning himself the B-Win MVP award for Game 3 of the playoffs. Papas set four personal EuroLeague career highs, 25 points, five three-pointers made, four steals and a performance index rating of 31 as the Greens defeated Seska Moscow 86-85. He also tied career highs with four assists and eight fouls drawn. His point total matched the third highest in the club's long playoff history. A history that was prolonged as Papas assured with the biggest night of his EuroLeague career that Panathinaikos will play Game 4. These are the top three plays of round three of the playoffs. Number three, Piraeus, Greece. Towards the end of a thriller, Olympiakos lights up Peace and Friendship Stadium. Vangelos Manzaris, two. 
Othello Hunter. He throws down the hammer over Ante Tomic. Number two, Tel Aviv, Israel. Fenerbahce trailing by two with seconds remaining. Emir prells it to Jan Vesely, who explodes to the rim. An amazing dunk to force overtime for Fenerbahce Ulka, who later became the first team into the final four. Number one, Istanbul, Turkey, final seconds. FS leading by three. JC Carroll for Real Madrid hits a tough triple and ties the game. But we're not finished yet. Seven seconds remaining. FS gets it back. Dante Draper driving, sends out the pass. Matt Janning on the buzzer, wins it, keeps his team alive and sparks wild celebrations in the Abdi Epekci Arena. Incredible win for Anadolu FS Istanbul and Matt Janning with the game-winning triple. A 13-year tradition that brings many of the world's best young basketball talents to the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four each spring will continue in Madrid next month with a new name, a returning champion and seven hungry challengers for the title of Europe's best junior team. The under-18 highlight of the season, the Adidas Next Generation Tournament, promises the same excitement as always. When play begins Thursday, May 14th at the emblematic Polideportivo Antonio Magariños in Madrid. Reigning champion Cervena Zvezda Telecom Belgrade returns with many of the team's leaders from last year's title team in Milan, including 2014 finals MVP Vojislav Stojanovic, who added more hardware to his collection by winning the MVP trophy when Cervena Zvezda won its fifth straight title at the Belgrade qualifying tournament. Real Madrid will be motivated to win its first Adidas Next Generation tournament title at home after losing to Cervena Zvezda in the Milan final. Madrid booked its ticket again this season by repeating as L'Hospitalet champion with Samba in Day being named to the all-tournament team in the qualifiers. Two-time champion Jalgiris Kaunas reached the finals for the 11th time in 13 tournaments by repeating its crown in the Kaunas qualifier, whose MVP Martinez Hechodas was also on the all-tournament team in Milan. The other team to qualify directly for Madrid was Stella Zurra Basketball Academy Rome, which reached its first finals by winning the Torneo Città di Roma qualifier thanks to MVP Andrea La Torre. Four wild cards went to 2010 champion Inset Paris, Unicaja Malaga, and finals debutants Spa Sarajevo and Vef Riga. Inset lost only one game in the Kaunas qualifier in the deciding group game against Jalgiris before finishing third thanks to its top performer Batis Schuaf. Vef Riga also dropped just one game in Kaunas in the final against Jalgiris for a second consecutive season. The Latvian side features one of the most exciting players in the game, Rodion's Kurush. Unikaha returns to the finals for the first time since 2009 after having been runner-up in Rome to Stella Zurra, its fourth defeat in a qualifying final since 2009. Malaga brings plenty of talents, led by Romaric Belemen Zabatu. Spars, meanwhile, finished third in Rome, losing only to Unikaha and her star Edin Atic as one of the players to watch in Madrid. All will be gunning to lift this year's trophy on Sunday, May 17th at Barclay Card Centre in Madrid, hours before a EuroLeague champion is crowned on the same floor. Don't miss the next wave of great young talent at the Adidas Next Generation Tournament. Olympiakos Pireus' challenge for another EuroLeague trophy has been strengthened in recent weeks by the return to fitness of one of the youngest players on the roster, Ioannis Papapetrou. Injury prevented the 21-year-old forward from playing this season until the final weeks of the top 16, but he is determined to look forward rather than worry about the time he lost on the sidelines. Oh, it was really tough, uh, probably one of the toughest periods of my life. I had some injuries, but uh, you know, uh, God has a plan and uh, 
They're already behind me right now, they started in the past and uh, I'm focusing only on my future. The timing of Papa Petru's injuries over the last couple of seasons means that he is in the strange position of having played as many games in the EuroLeague playoffs than in any other phase of the competition. Despite having just three regular season and nine top 16 games under his belt over two seasons, Papa Petru has already played in nine playoff games. And he is undaunted by the challenge of being thrown into the deep end at this decisive time of year. As a player, this is uh, uh, what you live for, this, this is what you want, um, to play in these big games, to play in these uh, big uh, courts and atmospheres and arenas, and uh, I feel like uh, as a player you always want to step up and uh, be good for your team in these moments. During his so far brief EuroLeague career, this talented young player has already established a reputation for being a versatile performer. And Papa Petru is happy to be known as a player who can help his team in a variety of ways. Uh, yeah, oh, uh, you know, I'm trying to do whatever I can to help my team uh, win. Uh, this is the most important thing. You are competing at the, the highest level when you're a part of a big team like Olympiacos. Uh, I feel like winning is the most important and uh, uh, I can do, uh, I, will, I will do anything I can to help my team succeed. Next month's Final Four in Madrid could allow Papa Petru to cross paths with another Turkish Airlines EuroLeague star with whom he shares a common link, Sasha Kaun of Seska Moscow who coincidentally attended the same high school half a world away in Florida as Papa Petru. We both went to the same high school. Uh, we left our countries when we were really young to go to a high school and, uh, and study after in college. Uh, you know, I feel like it's uh, all about choices. Uh, I wanted to play in college, Sasha wanted to play in college, and we just ended up going to the same high school. You know, it was a coincidence. Papa Petru's university career in America only lasted a season before he was lured back home to Greece by the opportunity of joining Olympiakos in the summer of 2013. Although it meant cutting his time at college short, he admits the chance to play for such a major team in his home country was too good to resist. It was a dream to uh, play for Olympiakos. Uh, at that time, they were back-to-back -back champions. Uh, like you said, uh, I felt like... Uh, the opportunity was great for me and, uh, you know, it was something that uh, I just couldn't deny. Now Papa Petru is playing a full part in his team's quest to claim the Continental Crown for the third time in four seasons. And he says everybody at the club is focused on making Olympiacos champions again. I feel like uh, me being one of the youngest guys in the team and uh, from me to the oldest guy on the team, uh, we all dream about it. Uh, taking Olympiacos back to the top. Uh, this is the ultimate goal and uh, this is what we're fighting for every day in practice. With defences on alert to stop your every move, leading the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague playoffs in scoring is no easy feat. Luckily for Jeremy Pargo of Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv, who was the top scorer in the playoffs this season, he has plenty of practice at making difficult shots. In fact, whenever he's not competing in games or practices, Pargo has made inventive shots something of a hobby. Not per se the trick shots where you're throwing it off the rafters and it bouncing in, not that, just, I guess, kind of a skill shot, I guess. And um, I feel like I can make a lot of shots <laughs> doing crazy things, so I just, I just try and, and luckily it works out. Pargo's best was more than good enough to win an extreme shooting contest among other EuroLeague players this season. He made six shots from half court in one minute, including four in a row at one point. No one else who tried came even close. I don't think it's a talent. I think it's, uh, it's a little bit of luck involved, but um, you know, I, I try my best whenever I do. <laughs> Argo followed his older brother Gennaro into basketball and into the EuroLeague, so it only stands to reason that he learned a thing or two about trick shots from him as well. I've always been able to shoot weird shots. I think I got it from my brother, and I saw him do it, and I guess that's that little brother's thing where you're like, hey, if he can do it, I can do it. So <laughs> I guess I've, I've been shooting the crazy shot ever since he did it. If the atmosphere is casual enough, Pargo is not above using his unusual skills to make a friendly bet. I don't really have a favorite. I mean, it's just spur of the moment thing. Like, hey, 
I think I can make this. And you say, hey, hey, I bet I can make this shot. It's just, just random. It's never, never planned anything. It's just random. It could be me just standing somewhere like, hey, I think I can make this shot. And I'll ask the teammate, hey, I bet you 10 push-ups I can make this shot or something. If I miss, I got 10 push-ups. <laughs> But if there's a chance to prove a serious doubter wrong once in a while, Pargo will take that action too. Uh, I've been around a couple guys that are, that, that are pretty wealthy, so I try and challenge those guys mostly. <laughs> I take two out of five from half court. I take that. Although his speciality is the half court heave, Pargo caught just such a big fish a couple of years ago by taking shots from even further down the court. I was just throwing up shots from half court or something. And I told him, I said, hey, uh, I bet I can make one from, from here, one out of five, from the uh, from this free throw line to the basket. And, and uh, he said, no way. So <laughs> I think I made it on my first try, actually. It was not the first time Pargo sank a three-quarter court shot, but he doesn't see the practicality of practicing it. I have made a couple three-quarter shots, three-quarter court shots before, so, but probably won't ever shoot any of those in a game. <laughs> Maybe after seeing teammate Devin Smith do just that this season, Fargo will have to think again. But thinking twice is better advice for anyone who doubts him when Pargo says, I bet I can make this. A lot of people bet me twice because <laughs> they don't think I can do it again. <laughs> That's the trick part of it. Three series left and their leaders holding 2-1 advantages. Do or die was the new normal as game four of the playoffs tipped off with final four places hanging in the balance and countless fans on the edge of their seats. Anadolu FS Istanbul started strong at home in its must-win game four against Real Madrid as Dario Saric produced an outstanding first-half performance to put the hosts up by six. Madrid came back from the break invigorated, however, taking charge with a 3-16 run sparked by Andres Nocioni. Milko Bielica heated up to pull FS closer, but Madrid scored the first seven points of the fourth quarter too and pulled steadily away. Rudy Fernandez and Sergio Rodriguez hit all the big shots to ensure a 63-76 victory and a 3-1 series win to make Madrid the home team at the final four. After falling a single shot short of Final Four qualification two nights earlier in Athens, series leader Seska Moscow came out strong against host Panathinaikos as Andrei Kirilenko put his stamp early on Game 4 with a pair of blocks and seven straight points. Seska took a double-digit advantage before James Gist rallied the Greens to within three, but Nando De Colo and Milos Teodosic led a 0-13 third-quarter blitz that gave Seska full control. The difference rose to 19 points early in the fourth quarter, and Panathinaikos never got close the rest of the way, with Seska finishing as an easy 55-74 winner to reach its 12th Final Four in 13 seasons. Like so many of their previous meetings, Game 4 between Olympiakos Pireus and visiting FC Barcelona promised and delivered plenty of thrills. After a tight first quarter, Juan Carlos Navarro and Ante Tomic came on strong to secure an eight-point halftime cushion for Barcelona. Vasilis Spanoulis brought the Reds back before a tension-filled final quarter that featured nine lead changes and six ties, the last at 65-65 with 5.2 seconds left. That's when Olympiakos used its one last play to find George Printedzis for another memorable buzzer beater that won the game and the series, sending the Reds back to the final four. After two weeks' worth of playoffs drama, it's on to the final four, where Madrid challenges Fenerbahce and Seska takes on Olympiakos in the semi finals, with the winners facing off for the EuroLeague trophy. See you in Madrid.
nine games into his return to the club where he first played as a teenager last century, Andrei Kirilenko put his stamp on Seska Moscow's march into the final four with a signature performance that made him the B-Win MVP for game four of the playoffs. Kirilenko finished with a double-double of 13 points and 10 rebounds, as well as three blocks, three assists and a steal all adding up to a personal index rating of 27, his highest since returning to Moscow in February. This is the fifth weekly B-Win MVP award of Kirilenko's EuroLeague career, and it allows him and Seska to now set their sights firmly on their first continental championship together. Now let's check out the top three plays of Game 4. Number three, Athens, Greece. Weekly B-Win MVP Andrei Kirilenko shows all his class to take a tough high pass, spin away from a defender and rise to the rim for a powerful slam. Fabulous play from Andro Kirilenko. Number two, Athens, Greece. For the last time this season, James Gist. Mr. Highlights Reel once again. Seska Moscow thought Pavel Korobkov was going to score. But Gist had other ideas. Number one, Piraeus, Greece. Game tied, 5.2 seconds remaining. Olympiakos, Spanoulis, Slukas, Yorgos Plintasis to win the game and the series and send Olympiakos Piraeus back into the final four. Incredible scenes in the Peace and Friendship Stadium as Yorgos Plintasis, the man with the golden touch for Olympiakos Piraeus, wins it in the most dramatic possible fashion. We will see you and Olympiakos Piraeus in Madrid for the final four. We'll be back next week.